deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. The words of Jesus in today's gospel. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. The toughest funeral masses that I have done throughout my priesthood has to be the death of a child and those who died by suicide, some of whom weren't that much older than children themselves. Going to homes and saying something like, I'm so sorry, and trying to be the arms of Christ as I hold a grieving parent or spouse or brother or sister. There's nothing much more I or we can do than that. We here at Encountering Christ Ministries, thank you who have been affected by suicide. Thank you for coming here today. And those watching at home, thank you for joining us. I know some others were invited and just could not attend. Why? Because they didn't want to revisit the pain. And that is so understandable. And we pray that the healing graces of this afternoon will bless them too. Whether your loved one died a few weeks ago or a number of years ago, there is still that emotional room in your soul reserved for, for them, filled with memories, the suddenness of their passing that you didn't see coming, and the funeral that you can barely remember because you are still in shock. What do we do with all these emotions that can surface at any time. In the gospel today, Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Denying oneself does not mean blocking oneself from the practical love of others. We need each other. Denying oneself means coming to a place where we realize that there are many things we cannot answer. So we surrender all to Jesus. And then he says, take up your cross. Struggling with suicide has to be quite a cross to carry. You may still feel rocked or hurt or betrayed even and confused. You may still experience a whole range of emotions and reactions and each one is painful. Your initial reaction was probably shock and disbelief. Now you're trying to make sense of what happened. How do you come to terms with the suicide of someone that you knew so well? Can you make any sense out of a senseless act? Some of you may feel a sense of guilt and responsibility. It's normal. It's, it's normal to wonder, could I have done something to help them? If only I had done this why didn't I notice it? Also, suicide by definition cuts people off. So anger and betrayal are natural reactions. And then there's the fear of doing the same thing, be it you or another family member. With suicide, you face unanswerable questions. Everyone who is who has been touched by suicide, wrestles with, why did this happen? Why did, it, why did it have to come to this? Couldn't it have been stopped? No matter what reasons there were for the suicide, in the end, it can never be completely explained. You're left with questions that cannot be answered because the person is gone. That's the cross that you carry. And the language of the cross is very much Christian. Christ carried a cross too. He died on it for me, for you, and for your son, daughter, parent, sibling, friend who took their own life. He died for them too. If you are here, or if you're watching from your home, then I assume that you have at least some sense of faith, of the love of Jesus. He said in today's gospel, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. As I said earlier, these are the three conditions 
of being a missionary disciple of Jesus. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him, follow him, follow him. In the Bible, God doesn't offer us, such, uh, offer us platitudes or nice, sweet answers to all of this. But he gives us something much better in response to your sorrow, your emotions, and your unanswered questions. He gives us himself. C.S. Lewis, in his book, The Four Loves, wrote that our need for God is revealed in our growing awareness that our whole being, by its very nature, is one vast need, incomplete, empty, yet cluttered, crying out for him who can untie things that are now knotted together and tie up things that are still dangling loose. Experiencing the suicide of someone you love will put you in a place where you can do, all you can do is cry out to God, the only one who can untie the things that are all knotted together and the only one who can tie up things that are dangling loose. We have to say, along with Peter in John chapter 6, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. And we have to believe and, and we have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. At a fundamental level, you must be able to say, I don't understand this. And I must leave it with you, my God and my King, who knows everything, because I don't know everything you do. God is not naive to the realities that drive someone to suicide. Nor is he naive to your struggle with grief and with pain. It is in the middle of these hard realities that your faith and trust in God grows and matures. And God explains it this way in Jeremiah chapter 17. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for it leaves it leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. Jeremiah is talking about living in a desert where life is hard and brutal. The desert in the Bible is a place of death. There's no water, no food, and it's full of poisonous snakes. It is a place where your faith is tested. And as you deepen your trust in God, your desert will become the place where you find God's living water of hope, of mercy, and blessing. Jesus said, do not be afraid. And I want everyone in this church to hear that. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I am with you. He is the only one who can reassure your heart. Even though you are feeling alone and abandoned, he is with you. He is with you. God is with you. Emmanuel. And because God is with you, you will be fruitful even in the aftermath of heartache. You must constantly remind yourself that the eternal God is with you and he is bigger than death. He is so much bigger than death. In Revelation chapter 21 we read, he promises that one day death will be ended and all sorrow, sign and tears will be wiped away. Suicide. Suicide brings suffering and difficulty into the lives of everyone who is touched by it. But God has come in the person of Jesus and entered into the difficulties, the sufferings, the sins, and the disappointments of this life. Jesus bore our weakness. He was tempted as we are, and he triumphed. He now comes near to us with promises of mercy and goodness. In Romans chapter 8, St. Paul doesn't say that we won't have hardships. Instead, he acknowledges that there will be tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, and danger. But he does promise that none of these will be able to separate us from the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. So cling to this promise, brothers and sisters. Cling to Jesus. Invite him into your struggles, your sorrows, and your questions. Fill your mind with his words. Also connect honestly with other people. This is why we're here 
at Encountering Christ Ministries. This group of people here who organize the Encountering Christ Ministries, the Missionary Disciples, are hosting this afternoon because we want to connect with you. I know that you, you are, and just know that, that you are invited here, not just today, but again and again and again. Don't try to handle this apart from community. We need community. Gather with those who have been affected by the suicide too. Today, the 3rd of September 2023, could be day one of these gatherings. Day one. And thank God for organizations like SOSAD and Pieta House and the Samaritans who are saving lives and reaching families who are suffering this kind of grief. So please, in the name of Jesus, don't avoid talking about the suicide. The tragedy of suicide doesn't have to tear relationships apart. Your family can pull together more tightly and friendships can become deeper as you cling to each other in the face of how hard life is. Genuine human community is one of God's greatest weapons against isolation and despair. So go to Jesus, connect with others, and fight the temptation to isolate yourself. And finally, go and be a comfort to others. There are still people who need you, who need us, your family, your friends, people that you work with. And what I'm going to say now may sound insensitive, so please forgive me if it does. It is not meant to be insensitive. But get this, nothing will bring your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your parent back. Nothing. Pray for them. Yes, pray for them. But from their death, you, you can become a wiser person, a wiser friend, a wiser parent. You may not see this now, but God will use what you're going through now to give you wisdom and tenderness as you reach out to others who are suffering. God's comfort will flow through you so that you can comfort others in their trouble. Like St. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, God comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. If God can turn crucifixion into resurrection, surely he can turn your tragedy into something powerful in you and through you. Take refuge in Jesus. Love others. Teach others from your experience. And run the race until he calls you home. This means living each day knowing that your life belongs to Jesus. And because of that, continue to take small steps forward, even when life seems overwhelming. As you do this, you are facing the darkness that suicide brings, but you're also responding by living in the light and hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Deny yourself, surrender yourself to Jesus, pick up your cross and follow him, follow him, follow him.